listening to the Bruce Mitchell audio show for Sunday, May 30th, Memorial Day weekend. It's Ruben Jay, and I'm being joined by Bruce Mitchell for the All Elite Wrestling Double or Nothing post-show analyzation, whatever you want to call it. Bruce, wow, a, sh- a wrestling show with no zombies. Yeah, that was good. Um, and also, it didn't have that... It didn't have that big stunt bump where you, you went, oh my God, the fireworks didn't go off, the, the firecrackers didn't pop, or, or um, you know, how did he fall and all that. So they, they avoided that. But it, it was another wrestling show that was a good hour or so too long. Um, I liked a lot of the booking, um, but I thought it, it, I thought there were parts of it that were too violent, and the violence just kind of kept going and going and going, where it just kind of got, bo- I don't want to say, yeah, I'll, I'll say boring. I mean, it was just a little too much. Well, I will, uh, we'll jump into the matches here in just a second, but, you know, if you were to, to sum up uh, the pay-per-view in, in, in three words or less, what would you say? Um, good show, smart, um, and too long. Okay. Cool. Perfect. So let's go ahead and start off with the main event, uh, the Stadium Stampede Pinnacle versus Inner Circle, where the stipulation is if uh, the Inner Circle lost, it would have to disband forever. Uh, this this match, on my real, real quick, my two cents, um, it, it was an okay match. I, I thought that by the time we got to this match, we were kind of tired of it. Um, it was not my favorite match on the card. Uh, Bruce, what was your thoughts? I thought it, I thought you, you, the natural comparison is the the um, the stadium stampede match last year, and I thought it was uh, somewhat better. Um, by the time it got into the disco um, with Tully Blanchard and, and Conan, but when it got to the disco, I thought it was I thought it was in the club. I thought it was pretty good, and then it just kept going on and it kept going on, and you know these things. A movie, a movie fight scene that lasts, you know, two minutes is too long. So a movie fight scene that lasts, you know, for professional wrestling that lasts twenty minutes of just smashing people with stuff, it got it got to be too long. I was glad that Sammy Guevara got to get the pin, and they did, um, you know, on Sean Spears, and they did do, they did have it go. It played off of storylines um, with Guevara, you know, you know, saying don't kill, you know, don't kill Chris Jericho, and that was that was good. MJF and Jericho it was kind of like you know the idea you'd watch a, you'd watch three or four people fight for three or four minutes while everybody else fought other places. Um, it, it, it gets to you after a while. I mean, I think it's just. I, 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 I'm hoping that this is, I can take this about once a year, and that's what this was, and I was thinking maybe there's one more in the series, but that was it. Um, I would have liked to have seen, um, you know, I would have liked to have seen um, uh, the Inner Circle lose just because I think there's too many factions in AEW. I think there's too many factions in wrestling. There's too many factions in AEW, and getting one out of the way would have been a good thing. But um, still, um, this was, you know, this was watchable but too long yeah absolutely i you know it's one of those things where i i knew that the inner circle wasn't going to lose just because they're, they're such an over <clears throat> excuse me an over act right now uh and then just coming back to the live crowds it would be kind of foolish to end the inner circle so quickly into you know, having the crowd back um a couple things to note that i thought were kind of ridiculous was um and you can kind of tell me what your thoughts are on this as we go uh but i, I really felt that the uh, I called it a Mortal Kombat fight scene between Guevara and Spears when they entered into that chair room. I thought that was a little over the top. Um, I thought I actually thought the disco bar scene was absolutely terrible. I, I'm like, this is not believable. Oh, okay. Uh, what, are, what are what are people doing? You know, like there's a wrestling show going on. This arena is completely empty, and you're having this random makeshift bar in the middle of this area, and then you know FTR comes in and just clears out house with nobody trying to fight back. It, it just seemed a little ridiculous to me. Um, and then yeah, I also- but you know what? What I was a little concerned with for the Jaguars was Urban Meyer and um, what's his face were the only two coaches working. Don't football coaches work like nineteen, twenty hours a, a day, and they they never give up, and they never, you know. And I, I did like there was Urban Meyer, and we were sitting there watching, going, "Holy crap, that's Urban Meyer!" And they didn't identify him for a while, which I yeah. thought was a pretty cool little moment. But um, but yeah, it, it, there's all kinds of things like what you're talking about when you're watching this stuff that. 
that if you put that, you know, that two and two don't add up to four very well. And yeah. um, it's, you know, it, it's there and it's like, okay, so why, you know, what are people doing? It, you know, what are a few people doing in a disco and why isn't anybody? And then, yeah, you know, I keep watching this and I, this is the grown up in me thinking, well, who's going to clean up all this shit? Like, you know, it's like, I mean, that was, you know, some poor schlub for, you know, it's, um, so yeah, I I think this show could have could have done really well without without that um, without that as the main event or not have it on the show. I mean, I, I think that um, you know necessity is the mother of invention as far as COVID you know as far as COVID nineteen went, but it's time to um, take advantage of the crowd and a lot of what this what made this show good was the crowd being happy to be there and and into what they were watching. Yeah, I felt like the crowd really made the show. And at the end of the day, they were the quasi stars of the show. Uh, last note on this that I had is I thought I thought MGF should have gotten gotten the pin. He should have lost. Uh, I think it would have been a nice end to this story. And hopefully, See, this I, by the way, I do disagree with you about. I mean, I think Inner Circle losing leads to a lot. It's not like you get rid of everybody, but it leads to a lot of of storyline things that you can do before um jericho and i think jericho should be out of the picture i, I think like one of the things here is is that mjf should have betrayed him and, and you know hurt him and, and then he'd be gone but i suspect we're gonna see um at least one more um team versus team match of some sort i don't know you know with with blood and guts war games or um or you know, I don't think it'd be another stadium stampede. But what do you do? So, I, I, I but I, but I definitely feel like we're going to see another one of these things. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's go to the uh, All Elite Wrestling World Championship match. We had Pac versus Orange Cassidy versus the champion Kenny Omega with Don Callis. Um, right off the top, I thought this was a fantastic match. Um, I, I don't. I have a lot of things to say about it, but this is your show, so I want to hear what you have to say about it no, first. No, no, I don't do that. But yeah. So um, I thought it was, I thought it was the best match of the night. I thought um thought it really played into three very different types of wrestling acts. You know, Pac is Pac is just this badass, you know, strong style, um, you know, coming all the way through. And then Orange Cassidy does what he does, but he does it really well, and it's really over. And then Omega's the the sneaky champion. Who's really good, but also is is really annoying and, and really bad. You throw Callus in there. I thought like this really played off everything. And the day and when the day comes that Orange Cassidy wins the um, AEW championship, and that day may not come for a, for a, you know a couple of years, but when that day comes, it's going to be built really well by doing it what they doing what they did here. And I do need to explain to you when I talk about. Um, when I talk about three-way championship mat, uh, three-way championship matches, um, the math for that, the math is it's not what the odds are. The, 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 that's just sort of stupid. Those odds that doesn't make any sense. It, it, there are odds in pulling out. Um, you know, there's odds in whether you're you know on the roulette wheel whether you're gonna whether you're gonna roll red or black. But um, if but with this, the odds are always that the champion retains because it's not a, particularly the champion's a heel. The champion's going to retain in the three-way match because it's not enough. It's not enough to change a championship. Um, there's not enough impact in one guy pinning another guy. They make a big deal out of the stupid part of it, which is that the champion can even lose his championship without getting pinned. And so all that is just, it's a way to, um, it's a way to do what they did. If, if they do a good job with it, it's a way to do good character work and then let the, let the champion retain and to continue everything going. And one of the things I thought with this match was I want to see Pac versus Omega. Mm -hmm. And I want to see, um, I want to see, um, um, Orange Cassidy versus Omega for the championship. And, and as far as that goes, I'd like to see, you know, I'd like to see Pac versus, um, um, you know, Orange Cassidy again, because that, that match has a real chemistry to it. It's really smartly done, but, um, it's two, three very different types and they all got a chance to, to shine, um, athletically and, and, and best of all with their characters. So I, I really, there were things on this show I thought were really strong. And this was, this was definitely one of the strengths of the show. Absolutely. I honestly, well, first of all, did you see my, my response to your, your post about, uh, 
three-way championship match math yeah i did that's why i kind of like said it's like it has nothing to do it has nothing to do with there's you know 30 30 33 33 33 or 50 50 50 or whatever the hell it, you know whatever you know, WWE used to talk about that that it was like the, the champion only had um a 33 percent chance of retaining it like like everybody's equal you know right. it's like there's you know that's just you know you can you know odds makers put um you know, you know, put point spreads on football games, but it's not an odds thing. It's not, it's not real odds. And so it has nothing to do with it. So, um, but what, just by watching wrestling all these years, um, you can virtually, if you went back and, and tracked it, you can virtually, you can virtually guarantee the heel champion is going to win the three-way match and, and retain his title. Um, it doesn't give the baby face enough of a push through and it's not a big enough thing. And particularly if it's a, a, a B pay-per-view now, AEW doesn't have B pay-per-views, but it's, um, but I would just, I would throw in that it is, it is nowhere near time for, um, for Kenny Omega to start shedding belts. I did like the spot where Ken, uh, the cheating with Don Callis, where Kenny Omega was smashing Pac with the belt. Because what I think is six or seven months down the line, you can re revisit that, you know, revisit him doing it with four belts, and then the last belt can be taken from him, and he can get smashed with it, and people will remember that, and that'll have some impact. But th there's some good little detail work I thought with this. But boy, I thought that like, um, you know, I, I thought that um, I thought that this was one of those matches where you look at it with everything that Kenny Omega can do, um, he's the top champion in the sport and he might be you know he might be the best wrestler in the world if he's not he's he's um in the argument and the argument is not very many people not very many other people in it yeah absolutely and i think the highlight of this match honestly outside of of the action itself was uh how good of a job aew did at presenting both Pac and orange cassidy as real contenders uh and yes. like setting you know thinking forward wise you know we have the next couple of months worth of program here if they decide to go that route um at, the absolute highlight for me was uh how freaked out don Callis got before he ran down to the ring and just you know you can hear him scream shit and throw his headsets down and run out to the you know down to the ring and it was it was really good because it showed you know the stakes of the situation so i, I thought it was a great match um, and I like that he's that he's pure heel. That they react to him like he's a pure heel. They don't. They don't. He doesn't say clever things to get a laugh or to get more than he. He really like hammers home the fact that that he's you know he's that he's that so called friend taking advantage of um, his friends and and that he's um, doesn't deserve to be there and he's ruining things. I mean, he does a really he, he's a good heel. He's, he was great. And it was actually, he played his role fantastic. Uh, let's go to the Sting and Darby Allen versus Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page match. Uh, this match for me was kind of just a, a match that was there that honestly, if it wasn't on the card, I wouldn't have missed. Uh, ended, ended well. Sting did a good, good job in this match. Uh, Bruce, what are your thoughts? I thought it went on too long. I thought, yeah. um, I thought that, you know, you want um, Darby Allen. Darby Allen's a hell of a character and they do a good job with, you know, I mean, and they do a good job with Sting holding him up and, and as far as supporting him, you know, as the, as the father has got said a lot of times in my house, um, the grandfather. Um, but he, um, but Sting is, you know, in his sixties and Sting, um, you know, you, you're going back to memories of what Sting was like in his prime and what he could do. And so there's not a ton that you want to have there. So this match, they did the right thing, which was beat the hell out of Darby Allen and then, and then have the, um, you know, and then have the, um, you know, the comeback spot. And they, they pulled out, um, they pulled out booking from a million years ago when they had, um, when she, when the ref missed, um, the the tag to sting the complete she just missed it and 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 made him go back into the corner i mean that that's old school booking but um sting kind of got by you know do you know stinger doing singer splashes and doing scorpions but it was close 
And so, um, you know, I'm glad it worked and he's, you know, and there, and also he should get the pin. He should be, I mean, he should be the one to win the match. If you're going to bring a babyface legend back, um, and put them in a match, they should win the match. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know that goes against a lot of what people think from watching WWE and it, it, but it, but beating legends never gets the heat that they think it does. And it also just, it just denigrates your legends and, it, and, and you need, you know, you want your legends to be legends. And so, um, people are happy to see Sting and they were, they were good to see it. And, and then Darby Allen, but this, this is like, this should have been half as long of a match. You know, it, it, I just think it should have been real basic, and 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 they they went too long to kind of, to kind of give everybody a chance, give everybody butt sting a chance to really work, and and there's other places to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I thought this was this next match was one of the, you know, better matches on the show. Probably my second favorite match on the on the whole card. Uh, Hikura Shuda defending the A. Well, I can't pronounce her name. I'm sorry. Uh, pre- <laughs> Defending the AEW Women's Championship against Dr. Britt Baker. Uh, incredible match. The crowd was into it every moment. Uh, Bruce, what were your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I wasn't as high on this as, as you were. I mean, they wanted, the people wanted Dr. Baker to win. And um, and Sheeta was good. But, um, and they were kind of back and forth about it. And they were cheering it. And the crowd really got into it. But it was, um it was kind of choppily paced and, and I didn't think it was all that real well, well wrestled. And it, it again should have been, um, it, it should have been shorter, but I know that, I, I know that, you know, it was time for, for Britt Baker to win the championship and it's time for her to hold, you know, the thing I, what I loved was, I mean, I don't know if I loved it, but it, she's such a, she's su- she's a heel and she's a good heel, but it's also the story of this person who, um, you know, started their own dental practice and, and earned their degrees and, and did all that and then became, you know, a wrestling star on top of it. So there's that admiration and, and you know, to have her in her moment, get hugged by Tony Schiavone, who really did help get her over in the beginning um, mm-hmm. with their kind of back and forth, um, um, you know, uh, chemistry and you know heelish but you know he he's having some affection for her even as she's a jerk to him and and, and vice versa um but yeah i yeah I, I wasn't the same for this match um i i thought it was um i thought it was booked the right way but i also thought it was um it, it wasn't as good as i was hoping yeah see what what i found interesting was it it seemed like the crowd started very split between uh, Sheeta and Baker, and then by the end, they they really wanted Baker to win. And I I thought I they really wanted to see history be made. They wanted to see that change come. Yeah, 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 for sure. And, I, and I'm wondering if um if it wouldn't have been for the fact this is you know one of two shows back to full capacity, if if that wasn't the case, if Baker would have won at this point in time, because it felt like for at least the last three or four months that Baker was on a slow burn to, to this position. So uh, oh, I wonder, very much so. It, I, it's I, like, yeah. Oh, I just, I would just wonder if, if it was more of AEW just trying to get capture that moment of a champion being crowned in front of this, in front of a packed house for the first time uh, in a year, because they haven't had this in over a year. So. Uh, oh I wonder, yeah. I think all that psychology was involved in this. I didn't think, you know, Cheetah was like, they turned on her or anything and they turned on either one of them. And, um, you know, it, and it is it is time for Dr. Baker. Britt Baker's been moving towards this, and she really has taken over. Um, so this is this is where um, having her, you know, having her defend and having her be the 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 personification of the women's division is you know should be if it works, it's going to be a move forward for that whole division. Absolutely. In the TNT championship match, we had Miro defending his title against the murder hawk, Lance Archer. Uh, I thought this was a really good match. Um, the only thing that I did not like about this match is the spot where Miro threw the bag that presumably had a snake in it. Um, you know, if there was an actual snake in there, terrible. I hope I hope AEW comes out and says there wasn't a snake, snake in the bag because that's just straight up animal cruelty. Uh, other than that, decent match. Bruce, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with that. There shouldn't be any. There shouldn't be any animals involved in wrestling. Like it, it was, um, 
it was wasn't a good idea back in the 80s it was um cringeworthy and animals got hurt and there was you know and it was known at the time i mean it was it just it was it wasn't that great an idea and they you know wwf got away with it but um but it still was there and then i don't know what they expected jake to come down and do with that bag that um he's not you know he was 66 years old today happy birthday jake roberts and um he's not in phys he's not in say tully blanchard condition where you think tully blanchard could could um do some wrestling moves maybe not look like you know he did 30 or 40 years ago but he could still do them jake jake's not in that kind of physical condition and so what's he doing um you know they they'd had the they'd had the point i thought it was smart just to like have you know it made miro look unhinged and then it gave you more of a fight that that miro like attacked jake um in in the way in for the women's match and and then um it kept jake out and and then but to have the spot was really awkward and and then what what he's doing with that bag and then throwing the bag um if it's if if there's if it was um not a real snake or real animal in the you know real snake in the bag then it's just sort of point it's kind of stupid to me and if it is one it's really a bad idea so um um yeah i didn't um, like this i thought this was a good hard-hitting match it was what you want some you know two bulls going at it and they they went at it and and, and, it, and again it's not time for miro to lose the tnt title so um lance archer you know lance archer needed to lose but um and, and this one i would have maybe shortened it up a little bit too and i would have rather seen more power and less um flying moves from the big guys because you had plenty of flying moves all throughout the show from guys who are better at it you know moonsaults and 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 and, and planches and everything from guys who were faster and you know really kind of amazing at it so then to like come to this what you want to see is it, it you know what you want to see is flesh hit, it, it, what you want to hear is flesh hitting flesh mm -hmm. and there was a lot of flesh hitting flesh in the um in the football stadium match but still this is this is you know you know miro being a badass and, and lance archer being a badass this is just i want to see these two guys fight and um it maybe went a little too long and a little too um you know, in, you know too many wrestling spot kind of things yeah absolutely we had uh anthony gogo versus the american dream Cody Rhodes, uh, Cody taking on his father's moniker for one night only. I thought Cody looked like a million bucks coming out. Uh, a go-go, just a hot heel. Um, honestly, I felt this match went, was a little too short for my taste. Uh, what, what did you think, Bruce? I thought it was a good match. I mean, I thought, you know, looking at it that um, this is Cody's protege. This is, you know, and Anthony Agogo has, you know, has a real menace to him, has a real... Um, Thing, you know, star quality to him, and then just selling the punches, um, I thought was thought was good. So as far as like what they were trying to do, I thought it was smart. And then to have, um, you know, to, to have du not Dustin, but to have Cody win, um, that was fine for the first time. And then you come back and have him, you know, have him lose. But um, yeah, as far as um, as far as coming out with his family, as far as coming at Margaret Teal and 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 representing the dream, and then but doing it in his own way and his own costuming, the costuming was was really was really good. And they didn't, um, you know, they didn't push the anti-American thing too far at all with this, and um, it, w it was fine. It was a good match. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to uh, a couple more matches out of these two, but hopefully they get a little bit more time. I, I felt like the ending was a little rushed, but that's just yeah. my, my my take there. Uh, we had the Casino Battle Royal, uh, Battle Royale, sorry. Jungle Boy wins by eliminating Christian Cage. Uh, a lot of guys in this match. Um, any thoughts on this one? I thought Jungle Boy, Matt Hardy, and Christian being the last three made sense. It was, and mm -hmm. also that Christian just threw Matt Hardy out. I mean, Matt Hardy's um, smart in what he's doing, but physically, it's just not there for him anymore. And then Christian's got some, but um, Jungle Boy is the long term burn as the the young baby face, and he's got everything. So I really, I really thought that was good. Um, I, I thought that was who should have won. Um, 
out of all of it and how they celebrated it and, and how Christian didn't turn on him and, 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 you know, all of that stuff was, was fine. But I also think, um, the, the battle Royal to get people on the show, to keep the morale up of the wrestlers. I'm not a fan of, I'm like this, this, this did lengthen the show. You could, you could, you could get everything accomplished as far as, um, getting jungle boy, you know, ready for a title shot or whatever it is. You, you can do that on dynamite. You can, um, do that on rampage. You can do this on, on this show and a lot less time. But, you know, having the, you know, I mean, even um, Jim Ross and, and Shivani were kind of making fun of, you know, the, the, the quasi Royal Rumble um, um, drawing to the suits idea of the show. I mean, idea of the match. I just, I, 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 I don't like this idea that you've got to get everybody on the show. It's like, no, put the, put the best show together. Um, um, with the most important matches and, and, the, and the matches and, and also not just the most important matches, but a, but a show that, that builds and has ups and downs to it um, and then get out of there. Um, and you know what? If, if you're not on the show, um, you know, work it to the next time. So there's, you know, this is a problem for all the companies right now, all the companies with national television, at least all the brands with national television, at least. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, then we had Young Bucks defending their World Tag Team Champions Championships uh, with Don Callis in the corner versus John Moxley, Eddie Kingston. This was an absolutely fantastic match. It hooked me from the moment they got started. Uh, was really interested, and uh, I was really hoping for for Mox and, and Kingston to win this one. Although I know it's kind of early in the program still, uh, but the Young Bucks defeat them. Uh, Bruce, what, what were your thoughts on this one? This was so well done and it's so character driven and it, there's such a conflict. I mean, it's the, you know, the bucks being, um, you know, the cheaters who have gotten to gotten to be big stars and, and they, and turned their back on the way they were and, you know, enjoying this. I, I love the sneakers. I love the, um, you know, and, and, you know, the costuming and what they do and, and boy, I'm normally not, um, as far as hair color goes, but Nick Jackson wearing that red, long red hair starting to bald was just like, you know, kill him. I was just like, I, I thought that was really there. And then, um, and then John Moxley and Eddie Kingston have a chemistry and, you know, Moxley's got, you know, Moxley's got that big star, um, history and, and earned it. And then Eddie Kingston's got that, um, you know, just working man, journeyman thing that that really um just works and so there's this contrast that there's going to be a fight between these guys and then it's not going to be you know it's not going to be trading um you know who's going to trade the cooler moves and all this and i really i mean i'm not kidding um and the irony of it is hilarious but um but the young bucks right now they're they're dennis Condry and bobby eaton they're the um they're this modern generation's Midnight Express, the great team that um, teams up so well, but cheats like crazy, and takes every advantage. And um, you sit there and go, you sit there and go, you know, as far as the story goes, you go, why do they cheat like that? Because they can still win. And then, it, it, including you know, including the old fashioned using the spray bottle and spraying it in the guys, you know, spraying the. Um, the air freshener or the um, deodorant or whatever you want to call it into somebody's eyes um, was just right there. And then Moxley and, um, you know, and, and Moxley losing, I thought, I, I thought it kind of went, wow, they just kept cheating and they, they, they finally got it. But you want to see this match again and you want to see, and again, you want to see Eddie Kingston in particular, you know, hold gold and hold gold. Um, and he, you know, he's right there. Um, they, you know, they, the chemistry is, is, you know, is they've done a good job of explaining, um, you know, these guys work together and they know each other. And then there's a real camaraderie there that, that comes through. And, um, so you got, you got brawling, um, you know, I, I thought I, I was like Dick Slater and Dick Murdoch, you got the brawling good guys who can fight and, and who can punch somebody in the nose faster than anybody and then you got the stylized cheating heels 
And um, I, I really like I really like this match. This was like I said, the stuff on the show that was good was really good, and this was this was right there with the with the um, with the championship match as far as like really fun to watch. Do you think that we're going to see more of of Mox and Kingston uh, long term, or is this kind of a just something for Mox to do in between world title runs? No, I think they're gonna. Um, I think we're gonna see Moxley and Kingston for a while. I think this is gonna be. This is about getting over Eddie Kingston, and it should be because there's the. Um, you know, it's there for them to do, and and, w- and it doesn't sacrifice anything with Moxley, and it keeps Moxley uh, out of the Kenny Omega picture for a while. Yep. And they've got plenty. You know, they've got plenty there. You know, they've got plenty of things that they can. Um, you know, plenty of places they can go with that so that's um you know um you know we should mention that they did debut a couple of they they debuted um leo rush um in the in the battle royal and then they also talked about the world's strongest man mark henry has joined the company as a as a um commentator for the for the hour-long show rampage on at 10 o'clock on friday 10 o'clock eastern standard time on friday nights on um on tnt yeah, I, I was going to bring that up towards towards the end, but we can talk about that now. Mark Henry uh, it was announced. He's going to be talking this Friday on Dynamite. In case you are interested in hearing what Mark Henry has to say, they debuted him really, in a, in a, you know, as well as they can. Um, you know, my question with that, you know, we'll, you know what? Let's talk about that later. But I want to want to plant this in your head: is who's going to be his broadcast partner? Let's, let's talk about that in a, in a minute here. Um, we had uh, Brian Cage versus Adam Page. It's a uh, Rage versus Cage in a Rage. Uh, as uh, Jim Ross said, with Adam Page winning, I-, I thought this was a hot match, a great match to, to start the show out with. Got the crowd heated and pumped up. They wanted to see uh, Hangman Page, uh, and they they got it. And then, of course, there's a cliffhanger now. What's going on with Team Taz? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I thought this was really good. I thought Brian Cage, man, for, for carrying that amount of muscle, um, he really um, came through in this match. And I love um, Adam Page winning with winning with that lariat that was a strong lariat on a big on a big guy as you're going to see. I mean, I just I, I thought this was really well done. And then there was the difference between you know Cage winning and beating Page before Page needed to get revenge, and then also there wasn't any shenanigans. There wasn't any. Um, you know, power bomb before the match or anything. It was the more even match and and page one and people were into him. And then this was this was at the beginning of the show. Um it was like the second was it the second match of the of the night and and you know the happiness of being back in a wrestling crowd and not being socially separated and being able to cheer and boo and, and, and all that and and participate. It it really, um, but the wrestlers gave them something to sink their, gave the fans something to sink their teeth into. I thought this was, um, a a very good match and cage cage for that type of body and that type of style, um, wrestled as well as I've ever seen anybody do. Yeah. I, I actually, uh, I think they did a really good job of refocusing Paige. Um, I felt like there was a while there when he was doing his his tag team uh, that who was he who was he teaming with? Um, gosh, who was he who was he team with? I, I forgot who it was. Wasn't it Moxley? Was Omega. it Moxley with Omega when he was with Omega? No, Omega. Yeah, he was. I'm sorry, Omega. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're playing the long game with him. Damn. I mean, it's yeah. like he's going to be one of the top stars. But and I wouldn't be surprised to see him knock off Omega, but it's going to be months down the line. It oh, might yeah. be another year. So it's like, but they're playing it right, and and he really hasn't lost that much. And um, you know, they they play with the um, they play with the drinking part, and I'm still not sure what that's supposed to be. But they, but still, I mean, he was um, and then he he was cool. I mean, he was you know he he came across as um you know, the cowboy. I mean, and and we haven't had a cowboy like come across as far as like being a star and being the star the way they can be in in years and years because WWE is, is weird about Western stuff. Yeah. Well, and I, you know, so real quick side note, I do have a history with AEW. I did cover the first double or nothing event back in, what was it? 2019 uh, in Las Vegas. And I was, I was backstage and I talked to, to, to hangman page after he won the battle royal and he carries himself like a star backstage yeah. 
you know, this guy is going to be a superstar and they are playing it correctly. Now. I think I thought his, the last latter part of his, his run with Omega, I thought was really weird. And I was not into this. I'm into, I'm into seeing him, you know, kicking ass and, and taking it to, to Brian cage. And it was a great match. Uh, and I'm really interested to see what, what's going on with cage. Cause he seems to have a little bit of a, of a side story going on there. Oh yeah, they they had he was um, he didn't want the interference. He wanted to win straight up, and so you know babyface tendencies, and you know that guy has that superhero thing to him too. So we'll see, you know, we'll see. And then also, Brian, you figure Brian Cage as far as um, you know, Bull of the Woods, Brian Cage versus Miro is um, you know has potential down the line too. Oh, for sure. Uh, well, that was the main card. Uh, Serena Deeb's uh, defeated uh, Rio in the uh, the buy-in for the NWA. I thought that was a good match. I thought that was a really good match. Was really was good. Really good match. Yeah. yeah, really good match. A good a good taste. Um, and and I thought both women really did a really great job. Um, with this, and that was that was double or nothing. I do want to make a comment here. Uh, I kind of texted you halfway through the show, and I'm like, is it just me or does Jim Ross look like he's not? having a good time right now um well you know i talked about this with casey o'connor on the last podcast um you know jim ross has this attraction back to the wwe he's always going to have it and and i honestly look at it as you know as a mix of of uh, being you know being the great announcer doing a during a great time in professional wrestling history um, maybe the greatest time as far as money goes and acclaim and, and, and mainstream acceptance goes, which is, you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin. And he was is such an important part of that, but also someone who was never quite accepted by, um, by Stanford, Connecticut and by, um, and, and by Vince McMahon. And, it, you know, there's a long history of, of him being treated poorly and then, you know, you know, come here, come here, come here, come here, go away, go away, go away. Um, that can happen if you're the per if you're the guy in the in the the cool guys group that that can be pushed out. And so um, I thought it, I, I thought it wasn't a coincidence that he said this week that when he was asked on um, a podcast with Conrad that he, you know that he, you know who's the best wrestler in the world, and instead of saying you know his job is to say Kenny Omega. I mean, literally, that's his job. I mean, Omega's um, got enough credibility as an act and, and everything that he's done, you know, by far that if they're if you're like their number one announcer and he's either number one or number one A um, with Tony Schiavone, then you say, you know, our champion is better and our, and our wrestlers are better. And you don't necessarily say Randy Orton. And I understand, you know, everybody has their taste and you can say, oh, this is honest and all that. But it was interesting to me that by coincidence also that Edman Verk was um, who, you know, word was he was, you know, things weren't going well with him, but that he had been, um, you know, he got he he's out of his raw job. He's out of his WWE announcing job within a day or two of Ross saying those things. And so it made me think, oh, um, I wonder if Jim Ross was, you know, Jim Ross had a sense of or was tipped off or was knowing that um, the Monday Night Raw job was becoming available and wanted to get back. And, you know, he'd gotten back when his wife died. He had done that. And so it, it, it's, it's, you know, I think that he should just claim that he's the best wrestling. And he should just make the claim, and, there, and there's a hell of a case for it, that he's the best wrestling announcer that there's ever been. And he should, you know, expect to be treated that way. And he gets treated well in AEW. But um, that part where you sent me that, you know, it was um, it was a break, and he started talking about Kenny Omega, about how great he was, and he got kind of he got kind of screwed up. And you could tell it was like on his mind, and maybe he'd taken some, you know, maybe he'd taken, and he should have. Um, you know, some people saying, "Look, you work here. Like, why are you doing that?" And and so he was there and you know he was kind of with it but with ross too ross has always been one um who's who best work you know comes with the camera off of him as far as being able to turn turn on that energy and then when the camera is off of him and this was before um 
his struggles with Bell Paul, Bell's palsy, then he has a different energy level, and and that's that's not uncommon for performers, and and so yeah, I thought that I thought he was kind of um, you know he was and he made some other there was some some sort of screw up with the transitions with that and Excalibur tried to help him. But um, yeah, he was talking about Omega this time and trying to explain and didn't do a good job of it. And I thought, okay, he's, he's feeling he should fix this, but he's also, um, you know, has mixed emotions about it. I just wish that he would, you know, I, I think that Shivani really, um, you know, really is enjoying this run and accepting it. And a lot of times, um, Ross has been good and, and on this show he was good but there was also times where you kind of like okay it, it's um, it's going on and then it's you know four hours of calling crap so um, yeah. that's a long time well I, I was also being more specific his, his health he, he did not look well like physically look did not look well he sounded yeah. off on Friday in some of the some of the matches I don't know if you pay attention to any of the, the packages that were airing during the pre-show but I did watch it Good many of them, but yeah, yeah. He had a real raspiness to his voice that's not there. Like he needs a break. Right. The dude's right. 60, 68, 69 years old. He needs a yeah. break. And I, I would yeah. if I were if I were Tony Khan, this is just me kind of fantasy booking here. I would I would tell JR go, go home for a couple months. You know, we got this covered, we got Shivani, we got you know, we, we got Excalibur, we got you know Paul White, we have Mark Henry coming in, you know. Like, Take some time off and 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 relax. The guy shouldn't be working that hard. Another interesting note too is well, his- I can tell you this too. He's one of those people that wants to work and he doesn't see himself as retiring. He doesn't see, himself- yeah. And I wonder what kind of trouble he would. I mean, I, I wonder what kind of trouble he'd get into if he had too much um, time. And and that can kind of you know, and, and that can be part of it but yeah i mean yeah he did yeah it was it was definitely noticeable that his his voice was wearing on him and maybe this you know and, and maybe some of this is is getting there you know and shivani's having some um you know the the, the physical thing of standing up and, and calling and doing this it's not um the concentration and and focus that it takes to do this um do what they're doing is really you know, there's a lot to it, and and at both of their ages, it can it can show. Yeah, well, and Jim Ross's contract does end next year. He signed a three year contract uh, when he first uh, joined the promotion. So, um, who knows? Uh, we have a couple AEW questions I want to run by you real quick. Uh, okay, we'll make this quick. Um, from Brian Hamilton says, "Welcome back. Uh, do you think AEW should give Patrick Clark another chance and sign him to a deal? Imagine him walking out, rebranded as the new American Dream." embodying multiculturalism, woke politics, etc., and immediately beginning a feud with Cody. I also think that he would be a breakout star that they are missing, uh, but it's such a slippery slope. What do you think? Um, I don't think there's any possibility of anybody being the American dream, but Cody Rhodes yeah. and probably not all, he's going to be the American nightmare. Um, and I, you know, I understand that it, it, Dusty, um, Dusty Rhodes is, it's a word that's used and, and I know all the flaws, believe me, but it's a, it's a word that's way overused in professional wrestling. And it turns into just, if you were on television, you become this. Um, and that's all it takes. But Dusty Rhodes was an iconic figure in professional wrestling, the American dream. And it was right there with it for someone to, to kind of come in and, and, and do that. Um, as you know, Patrick Clark, it, it, yeah, I don't, I don't like the, um, I don't like the kind of back and forth of that, but, um, but yeah, Clark could come in, and and they've got, you know, they, you know, it's worth saying they've got they've got new acts that are getting over, and and are being put in, um, you know, put in, in strong places for ratings, and, and, and they can hold it, and so um, they could certainly use more, but they're not, but they're not floundering for that either. So that, yeah. that'd be my answer for that. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're definitely not hurting for for future stars, and I think there's zero chance of Tony Khan uh, hiring Patrick Clark anytime soon. Um, we got uh, a question from Matthew Prentice. Uh, he says, "Hi, Bruce. Looking ahead to August, AEW will have two weekly shows on national cable and two weekly shows on YouTube. What are their best options for getting these shows out the door without running six or seven hour marathon tapings each Wednesday?" Love the new show. It's been great having you back in the game. I agree with that one. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, one of the things that's really you know interesting is there's 
about th this time in professional wrestling is you know there's you know these these big content companies AEW and WWE um, are serving more than just wrestling fans they're serving um, content platforms that just need something to put on and to need to fill their library of you know the streaming networks need to fill their library with with stuff or cable networks need to have you know and they need something that people will watch you know on a, on a current basis um even when they're not watching it um you know in a way that's going to make money and and you know i'm i'm I, I thought there was a good crowd tonight, but but how um, wrestling draws is going to be really interesting. And, and AEW is you know cautious with um, you know where they put tonight's show and, and how many how, you know how many tickets are they going to sell. You know they're looking at they're looking at what they were looking at before COVID, which is medium sized arenas. And and so um, to say that. Yeah, they're gonna um, particularly if they're gonna do um, AW Dark um, shows and and add another um, you know and add another hour for Rampage on Wednesdays and 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 all that. I think they're gonna have to. I think they're gonna have to play some. Um, they're, they're gonna have to rethink some things. And it, it kind of it, it worried me a little when Tony Khan this week said that they're gonna hire some more wrestlers. Because I think they've got plenty of wrestlers, and I don't think there's a demand to get that. That as you um, dissipate the product, as you um, have so you know just so many people to keep up with, and so many factions to keep up with, and so many of this um, that it it takes that you still need to be star driven. You still need to ha need to have people that are more important that are on there, and they do a good job of 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 you know, having some people coming along and coming up and then they do a good job of, of you know, for example, what they did with, with Brian Pillman Jr., which give, of giving somebody a feature for a little bit, but still in the end they put over somebody and they're, they're, they're there as support. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I think I look at WWE and I look at all this and it's like, how do you, um, I think these companies are having, a, you know, WWE in particular, but I think they're having a tougher time with um, having so many um, wrestlers under contract, and, and hopefully, what they'll do is send some, um, put some on some house shows without putting them on television, or put some, um, you know, or send some, you know, cycle some in and cycle some out, and yeah. and have some people not on television, not not to like punish them, but just to um, just to keep the freshness there and maybe there's something else that they can do that can make money for the company um as far as appearances go and and appearing at um you know I, I would think that i would think that some of the um meet and greet type of shows would would start coming up and 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 doing that but but you know staying in shape and and um, not overexposing them I and not wearing everybody out with with this um you know, I have some friends that watch AEW Dark. I do every once in a while, but um, you know, this idea that people are going to watch everything—they're not. I just, you know, I don't think that it's it's not that it's not that hot. It's not that strong. Yeah, and I, you know, here here are a couple things that that you know I have to say on this because I, I I we talked about this last week, I believe, where you know I, I feel like there's way too much TV for AEW already. I mean, they're only two, what two years old as far as like being on television. Uh, you know, so it, it's really a lot for them to take on so much content so quickly. Um, but I'd be interested to see if maybe they take Rampage and turn it into, you know, the old impact style shows where you're in a sound stage and you, you know, uh, it's easier for you to get, you know, crowds in and out and, and, you know, film a bunch of TV at once, uh, as opposed to trying to add another hour on top of, you know, a dynamite uh, plus, the you know the two different dark variations and and maybe it might it might be worth it for them to look at maybe taping uh you know house shows that they're starting to do uh and, and use those for the darks as well I, I mean i just i think that aw eventually is going to burn itself out i thought what really got well me I, i'll say this too i think that maybe doing some pre-tapes of interviews and of, of sit down things and of features um, to, to not wear out that live crowd. But yeah, that's going to be part of it. And that rampage on Friday nights at 10 o'clock, that's going to be an important rating. So I don't know that they're going to want to, um, to do anything that makes it look like it's a B show or to make that. And, and I'll say this for the impact 
you know, that impact model didn't work. And so that's, you know, maybe it works, maybe it would work now. It depends on a lot of different things, but, um, but yeah, it's going to be really, it, it's going to be really interesting. And I think that, um, I think that AW is going to, AW would, would do well to figure out, um, who can they feature in that hour and make that hour about, um, about three or four main event men and main event women and that's about it i mean as far you know three or four i mean uh, you know all together and, and then feature them through that and and somebody that's really popular on that because they're going to need that they're going to need that show to um to get a rating and so um and, and maybe it's you know the two hour show gives you you know hypes up this you know gives you main a main event for the two hour show on wednesday night but then also hypes up something special you know some special match for um friday night but it's gonna be yeah that's gonna be that's gonna be tough because again this is about the network wanting more content not necessarily wrestling fans going oh my god the nwo is so hot um nitro can go to three hours yeah yeah and i think part of it too for me is i think that that rampage is going to need to have a little bit of a different look than the the look that we've gotten used to for dynamite um and maybe that's just me thinking more in the uh well i've been saying that for 20 some years about smackdown and raw and never seems to quite go but yeah i i I could yeah that that if they can do it in a way that that looks as major league as what they do on wednesday nights and but there's some differences and, and there's some different announcers um, and, you know, Mark Henry being one, but, um, you know, th- th- that wouldn't be the worst idea. I mean, you know, yeah. just, it, but it's got to be, it's got to be, it's got to be not looking like, okay, this is the hour long B show. Yeah, for sure. I, skip. I, and, I, and I agree with that. I, I, I think that it'll be interesting to see what happens come August. Uh, Bruce, I think that's what we're going to call it. All right. Good show. Um, aw i mean this is this again coming right out of COVID, and and you know they their last pay-per-view they did a very good buy rate and so will this one do will this one um improve on that or do in the same category and and we'll find out in within days yeah for sure and you know what here's here's one last note on my end uh, i hope somebody from WWE was watching uh and are taking notes because i think aw did a really good job uh, hooking someone like me, who, by the way, this is the first time that I pay, I paid full price for pay per view since I want to say WrestleMania like twenty four. So uh, this is it was a it was a an investment for me that I actually ended up not regretting. And so uh, WWE needs to take note because I think that they did. I think AW did a great job tonight. So cool. That being said, Bruce, we'll be back. Well, you'll be back on Wednesday, uh, or no, 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 you won't be. You'll be back Friday for AEW. Yeah, and maybe get another show in there somehow too. So yeah, yeah. Thanks everybody for listening, and we're 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 building and building, building and building. Thank you guys so much. Make sure to head over to Apple Podcast and leave us a five star review. And if you want to submit a question for Bruce, it's uh, Bruce Mitchell Audio at Gmail dot com. The mailbag is open, so send us some stuff to talk about. Bruce, I'll talk to you soon. Yes, sir.